In the race to find solutions to combat climate breakdown, there are those who propose plantations of exotic trees that will sequester carbon rapidly and then at the end of their lives will transition to native forest. But can we rely on this happening? Is it guaranteed? What evidence do we have for it? Paul Quinlan and I decided to visit a couple of stands of exotic trees that were coming to the end of their life to see what was happening underneath them. Beside State Highway 10, in Cayo in Northland, there is a stand of Pinus panasta that appears to have a healthy understory of native forest. We'd heard the pines were wildings that had established after a fire. With permission from the landowner, Steve Zivkovich, we had a walkabout to see what we could learn. This is one example in Northland and probably an atypical history. This shows promising potential to transition from an exotic forest cover into native forest cover through natural forest succession. But this was not a planted exotic forest. This was wildings that came up at relatively sparse stocking and the high light conditions presumably have played an important role in this successful regeneration. This is in a grazed area and there's absolutely no understory but at some stage these trees have all got away underneath this Pinus panasta. Actually some of them are looking really healthy, quite good crowns. It's not hard to imagine that they could actually succeed here, especially once these Pinus panasta fall over. It's Kahakatea, Tōtara, Makamaka and the Kanuk is virtually gone. This is clearly a a, a, a Pinus panaster has fallen here and this is the heartwood I'd say that's left, the sap was rotted away but right here and down there right where it's fallen you can see there's Tōtara now and there's Tane Kaha here underneath this is regeneration where a, where a pine has, has fallen. I'm standing on a log. There's a root ball there, a fallen tree. There's one there. There's another there. There's several in the background. We've got quite a gap, quite a canopy gap here. We've got Tarides sapling. Another one there. Two Tortida there. And ferns, Tortida there. And Makamaka here. We've We've really got a gap caused by falling trees and we do have some excellent regeneration here. But it, for carbon farming, where's the biomass gone? From those standing pines, we've now only got a very small biomass here in this regeneration, in this gap. If I used to put my cows in there in the winter, oh, yeah. and they used to eat the mahoi in there, yep. full of mahoi, and they thrive on it and they'd come out and put them in there for three weeks there and three weeks on the other one over there and Barry come back on the farm he said no that's the end of that he said we're fencing it off and I appreciate what he did and when, when was that? when was it fenced Ooh, off? oh Hallie's been hit back on the farm close on 30 years now I would say and uh, two or three years after we ca he came back on the farm he said no we're fencing it all off and that's why it's regenerated whatever you see in there because there's no stock in there anymore has that made a big difference, excluding the livestock? For the undergrowth part of it anyway, not, not the actual trees, they were always there yeah. at that time. These pines apparently regenerated after a fire. However, we've got some areas, there's, there's Kauri and Rimu right there. Presumably they were missed by the fire, so they're providing a good seed source for this area now under Pinus panasta. But Mingi Mingi, Kauri, is Matipul, Tane Kaha, all regenerating underneath this pine cover. And when, when was the fire? There was a fire. Was there a fire? Uh, I lit a fire. All oh, right. When I was a teenager, <laughs> and, and the uncle had asthma in the, in the bed, 
and he said, I'll go up and burn that little bit of thing on the side. And the blessed thing got away <laughs> up into the pines there, but it didn't burn the whole lot, no. Okay. How much, uh, half of it? Or? No, not even that. So it, just, it just came up from the other side with the old house there I'm talking about. It's right. a new house now, yeah. we've rebuilt it. Um, from there, it went up through there. No fires been through here. On this, I know. this no. side, so that oh, hasn't so had fire. No. Okay, so that's not the the pines there are not the result of a fire. No, no, okay. definitely not. They're, They're just four. They were just wildings on pad yeah. on, on pasture. Yeah. Oh yeah. So when you say nearly 80 years ago it was low scrub, is that because it's a poor soil type, or why is it why was it low scrub? Was it cleared and burnt and then? That I don't know before my yeah. time, and um, I've only got those photos there to, to back up what I saw. I think I'm about 10 or 12 when the photos are taken. So about 70 years ago. Yeah, probably 70 yeah. years ago. And there was isolated pines yeah, yep. above the scrub. We're on this side with the fences there and all that. So that's all the same bush. Mm. And as far as I'm concerned, there's never ever been a fire through there, nothing. Mm. Other than the little one I was, <laughs> when I was a young fellow. Okay. okay, three likely keys to success in this case are likely to be the relatively high light conditions from the species and the low stocking rate, an adjacent seed source and probably the exclusion of livestock once some of the podocarps had become established. Meanwhile, just down the road, there's a ragged stand of Pinus radiata that is not transitioning quite so well. well in this case, the pine's fallen over and all we've got is a sea of weeds. There's nothing but a tree fern and some kawakawa here and weeds. So we've got wilding Pinus radiata here and acacia and a lot of fallen trees. There's an understory but it's it's a lot of weeds. There's kanuka which indicates that it's Light's not really a limiting factor. I can see one tarairi sapling and there's probably more further down the gully but there's a lot of weeds here in this understory. It's not a convincing case of strong native regeneration that would look like it's going to transition into native forest yet. Managing these weeds is going to be a big, a big job climbing vines and it's never a case of leaving things to their own devices. I think these sort of areas require a lot of ongoing maintenance. It's a lot of work. Clearly natural regeneration and native forest succession through wilding pines is extremely variable. We can't just assume it will always happen. Understanding the factors and learning how to manage successful transitions from wildings to native is essential. This requires urgent research, trials and documentation.